And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. <laughs> Let's get all Miami up in here. You will meet a major <laughs> hit maker with a brilliant Latino touch. Yes. Gear Expo Nashville, it's ready. The Blackbird Sessions, they're ready. We've got a brand new ITL. JD, hit the ignition. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yeah. What up, gringo? Como esta? <laughs> I just want to see your follow-up. Let me see your follow-up. Keep going. Well, they didn't answer me. Well, I'm Canadian. I go, bonjour. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Hey. Uh, Welcome uh, to the international we're, we're, version of yeah. Pisano's Place. Yeah, so. I'm fully international. We got people from Ohio. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're in that kind of mood, I see. No, I got some sleep, but, you know. Well, that's when it's worse. Yeah. You're better tired. I'm waiting on you to catch up. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're a month away from catching yeah, up. Yeah, a little bit. A little hey, bit. guys, thanks for hanging out with us. We're going to have a little bit of fun today. Um, my buddy Lou here is, is here. we got some guests. Herb's going to catch you up on all that. Should we get to so it? Let's go to get one, buddy. Let's do it. Hey, gang, thank you for tuning in to our weekly audio journey. We trust your week was bountiful, and we're going to make it better. Our partners, the Blackbird Academy, yeah. Vintage King, yeah. Lander, yep. DTS, yeah, yeah. Avid, yeah. Fab Factory, yeah, yeah. Recording Connection, and Westlake Pro. Uh, a couple of quick shout outs. In the house is Ohio University. Yay. Make some noise. Wow. Do that again. Yeah. Make some noise. Oh, okay, very good. Also, shout out to their teacher, my boy, Kyle Bowser, a music lover. Now, they have other folks too, Roger, and there's another lady, young lady there. What's her name? Jen, so Roger and Jen and Kyle, but Kyle and I go back longer. I attended an event that Kyle did last night. He's got a brilliant thing called Trial by Jury, and it was a it was a interactive discussion about the N word. Absolutely brilliant at the Broad Theater. Well done, and a huge happy birthday to my man Kyle Bowles. Just give him a round of applause. Ah. Talented fellow. We're going to do some stuff together. And then afterwards, and guess what? His son what is I'm, talented too. Oh, his son's talented. Listen, you don't know about the baseball player. Oh. Oh, there's a whole other thing going on. Wow. Uh, afterwards, guess what I did after I went to Kyle's thing? Uh, wait a minute. His television. Did, thing. It, involve, did it involve a drive through of any sort? No. Uh, no. Massage? Once a quarter, it's important for me. Well, could have, but I didn't. It's in quarter from, It's important for me to get all hip hop. Uh, so I yeah. went to DJ Ali's thing last night, and there oh, were, I remember him. There was all kind of medicines and things around. I guess people in there were sick, so they yeah, were a lot taking of glaucoma. Things. Yeah, lots of glaucoma, <laughs> lots of glaucoma. Uh, and so you know, about 12:30, 1 o'clock, I'm reeling, trying to act like I was 24 and stuff, and mm -hmm. really I'd need to go to bed. <laughs> and stuff. Uh, Ali was killing these mixes and working oh, on the best. Uh, an artist on Island is coming out soon called Mr. Jukes. It was absolute. Fire. Oh my God, it was hard for me to pull away. So that is one of the fun parts for a job. If you guys ever get an opportunity, maybe we'll set it up so you can just come watch Ali Mix. It's the most athletic, aggressive thing I've ever seen. And his decision making, his lightning speed is amazing to watch. So shout out to my little brother and our little brother, Ali, mm -hmm. and uh, look for that music. Now, on to Tennessee. We've got important stuff to do. 10 days in Tennessee coming up. An important footnote check, get out your calendars. I'm postponing the MTSU appearance till later. It wasn't quite coming together the way I wanted it to do, so it's on us. We'd rather make sure you're satisfied. Uh -huh. So the MTSU appearance will not be happening. Here's what you do. If you had plans to be there, adjust those plans by two days and just come to Gear Expo. You're only 45 minutes away. So switch those plans, get there, and here's what we'll do. We'll make sure you get a VIP after party invite. So no MTSU event in October, but a f in October 20th, 20th, but a full VIP invite on October 22nd so you can hang out with us and all the panelists. We'd like to see you. What is happening is Gear Expo. And I mean, it is definitely happening. How about this? 
Stars like rock legend Chris Lord Algae, he'll be there. DJ Swivel, fresh off chain smoker success, he'll be there. Brendan Benson from the Rockin' Tours, Josh Goodwin, who crafted the Bieber smash turnaround Josh, and sound. Amazing. Nashville icon Vance Powell, he'll Vance. be hanging out, coming off the Chris Stapleton success. Um, that's our producer and engineer panel. Hit songwriters Mark Beeson, Phil O'Donnell, Jason Duke, and Liz Hengber. Hits that they've done, Blake Shelton, Keith Urban, Kelly Pickler, Reba McIntyre, Craig Morton, Kelsey Ballerina, and on and on and on. We're going to have our We Stand for David Jam. That's our buddy David Platalero that yeah. we helped out during the Gear Expo. Five months from almost severing his spine, he is now driving by himself, walking on a walker. He's going to show up along with the Gibson guitar bus, which you can get on and do some cool stuff with. He's going to play some stuff for you right in the middle of the thing. And in our Cool Gigs and Audio panel, we'll have folks from radio. That's an audio approach. Oh. From the movies, actually Pitch Perfect. That's an audio approach. Audio forensics for crime, that's something you hadn't thought about. Websites that you can go to to get audio jobs, manufacturer reps, sound design, and much, much more. Lots of stuff for you to learn. That panel, by the way, is germane, timely, and could be the most important panel we've ever done. Be there. If you care about be your career, about be that. there. And then giveaways, what's been Sato known for? Giveaways. Have we got giveaways? But rather than Dave and I talk about it, let's not do that. Let's hear from the hot chicken having, hairy headed Hungarian hunk who goes by the name of. Hattie <laughs> Chongo, what prizes do we have? We've got the Avid Pro Tools dock, the Focusrite, Focusrite Claret 4 Pre, Apogee Mics, Ableton Live 9 Suite that you want, Prime Acoustics Recoil Stabilizer to help with your speakers, and we got, a re we got the Prime Acoustic Radio Gold Digger. Damn. Did you say digger? Gold Digger. I was, I was not clear. You have to, <laughs> you have to pronounce it. You, your enunciation has to be clear. I'm, I'm black, so it's, just th it's a thin line. Um, and that, let alone, we got, we got contributions from Tascam and Audionamics and Isotope yep. and on and on. You know what we do. You come to our events. We throw stuff out. You go home, make hits. Hey, that's the best deal in town. The event is free. You walk away with about ten grand worth of gear yeah. and a picture with you. We love giving away free we stuff. We do love stuff. <laughs> it's a great way to pace the show. <laughs> it is, man. It's so cool. It's like Santa all day you long. You get a prize. So you hard. get a prize. Yeah, exactly. Like, you got these eyes looking at you. Give me, give it to me. You know, I'm gonna go home and die if I don't get it. It is true. And like, oh man, it's so much fun. We're kind of like Oprah after taxes. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> the other thing that we're gonna do. <laughs> we got, it's a silly day at Pensado's no, place, I mean, as you can tell. <laughs> We're giving away preamps, and she gives away cars. That's why we're after taxes. <laughs> so um, here's another thing that you're going to get if you come. So every hour, this thing runs from 10 to 4 on October 22nd at the beautiful Vintage King Studios, uh, Vintage King Retail Shop. It's outdoor in the parking lot. We join a couple parking lots and have a ball. There'll be food and drinks. Right. and. Girls and guys, we want you there. You'll meet a lot of your heroes. But uh, every hour, we're going to give away about 30 VIP wristbands to a VIP uh, hang with Dave and I afterwards at Trace Horse Studios. And that's going to be a really special Can't hang. Wait. The panelists are going to be there. So Chongor will have those wristbands. And our girl, Stephanie Willis, will have Stephanie. those wristbands. We call her Spitfire. She's a beautiful blonde lady. You'll see her. We'll point her out at the thing. Statuesque. Statuesque is it even a better word. Um, and so you want to get there and make sure you get one of those things. It's going to be a good hang, great for your career. Um, there you have it, gang. Gear Expo Nashville. If you sign up right here at the URL, right underneath me, thegearexpo.com, we will see you there. They have been pouring in. We're up to a great number, but there's still room for you. You'll park at a parking lot. There'll be instructions. You'll grab a shuttle bus. You'll be brought over. Lots of stuff to do. Like I said, mm -hmm. food trucks, vendors, cutting edge gear, meet the makers, lots of legends, lots of panelists, opportunities for your job, lots of gear, and then us. <laughs> we mean nothing in it, but we provide it. No, you're Santa. No, we you're Santa, and I'm your little black elf. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're Santa. 
and you're my little. And I got nowhere to go with okay. that. <laughs> I'm gonna go over here and take a knee. <laughs> so that's not all in our Tennessee foray. Completing the Tennessee trip right after Gear Expo will be Dave's week-long intensive at the Ooh. Blackbird Studios, the incredible Major event. Blackbird Studios. For the Blackbird sessions, there's still for the Blackbird sessions, there's still a few seats left. Uh, don't miss this chance to learn from the Master Please Blaster. I'm gonna come through and speak to the incoming class and. I think CLA is going to come through. Yeah. He and I City will talk nice. about how you can make a living in doing this, and Chris will give you some tips. Uh, there's more friends of Dave who I think is going to check in, and that's a pretty cool deal. Your people are coming from all over the world. Karma told us Finland and a few other places. Mm -hmm. So you get an international experience. And with Dave, as you well know from the show, you're not just going to get technical gear. You're going to have lunches and dinners, and you're going to go through philosophy, and you're going to have a friend and a mentor for life. Your work's going to be evaluated. You're going to mic a band and record a band and watch a band being mixed. It is a hell of a week. So if you can afford to do it, we highly recommend doing it. People who have done it have gone on to their careers. Put them all together, get Gear Expo on Saturday, reload on Sunday, watch some football, sign up and get in that class on Monday. And by the time you come out of Tennessee, you'll be a badass. How do you do it? Email karma at theblackbirdacademy.com. That's C-A-R, like the thing you drive. Ma, like your mother. Karma <laughs> at theblackbirdacademy.com for information. Or go to blackbirdstudios.com for more information. So there you have it. Tennessee coming. Remember, no MTSU on October 20th. Gear Expo, October 22nd. We want to see you there. It's a chance for Dave and I to meet you and thank you for your free support. Sneaky some free stuff. You can see if Chong Wars muscles are real or not. They're not really. It's toilet paper and shit stuffed up in there. But that's another story. Um, and then we got an ITL. You want to introduce that boy? I'm still stuck on toilet paper. <laughs> I was going to ask where it stuck, but I'm going to move past Man, it. You know, we had, we had fun with Wawa's, and uh, I'm showing how, to, how I use some guitar pedals to make some of the records that you might have liked in the past. Roll it. Good stuff. Hey, guys. So I've, I've spoken to you a couple of times about guitar pedals and how much I love to mix with them. I'm going to show you a couple of examples today. Uh, my friend Joe Barisi gave me this MXR submachine. I'm in love with this thing. It sounds incredible on guitars, but we're going to mangle up a vocal with it for you. And then uh, Ottawa, this is an oldie but goodie. I used to use this back in the dark ages. And then my friend uh, Robert Bradshaw made this. Um, it's a boost overdrive pedal. Now, none of this happens without uh, my radial reamp at the heart of all of this. The reason I like this is, is it, it, it matches the impedances for me, but also I've got a mix knob. I've got a lot of different features that are really cool on this. So let's jump right in. Uh, I'm going to play you a vocal by my friend Sundafu, who was a producer, and Alessandro uh, Kalima, and um, the artist is Cooper Phillips. Amazing artist from uh, from Russia originally. You're gonna look out for her. She's got some great stuff coming out. So let's check it out. Gonna show out like I never get to go out. Okay, so right now we're the original vocal. So I'm gonna crank this bad boy in here. Gonna show out like I never get to go out. Gonna show out like I never get to go out. Pretty cool, huh? Now that you don't have my brushes, hide it inside your clothes. Gonna show out, like I never get to go out. Now that you don't have my brushes, hide it inside your clothes. So you can see you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Let's hook up, let's hook up the Ottawa. Gonna show out, like I never get to go out. Now that you don't have my brushes, hide it inside your clothes. Gonna show out like I never get to go out. Now that you don't have my brushes, how do you... 
Okay, the Ottawa. <laughs> this, this is an oldie but goodie. Let's check this bad boy out. Gonna show out like I never get to go out. Now that you don't have my precious heart and answer you call out. Gonna lash out like I never get to go out. Now that you don't have my precious heart and answer you call out. Gonna lash out like I never get to go out. Now that you don't have my precious heart and answer you call out. Gonna lash out like I never get to go out. Now that you don't have my precious heart and answer you call out. Gonna lash out. I can never get to go out Now that you don't have my brushes Head inside your club Anyway, you get the idea. Now, let's try the, um, let's try my, um, Robert Bradshaw. Gonna show out I can never get to go out Now that you don't have my brushes Head inside your club Gonna show out I can never get to go out now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club Gonna lash out Like I never get to go out Now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club Gonna lash out Like I never get to go out Now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club Gonna lash out Like I never get to go out now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club Gonna show out like I never get Okay, I got the Robert Bradshaw pedal hooked up. Let's check it out. We're gonna get a little bit of distortion on this. It's a different color. Gonna show out like I never get to go out Now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club Gonna show out like I never get to go out now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club. Really musical. Really, really musical. I can never get to go out. Now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club. Gonna show it. Mangled. Now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club. I'm mixing it in right here. That's none. Now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club Gonna lash out Like I never get to go out Now that you don't have my precious heart inside your club <laughs> Man, I could do this all day long and, and, and I've been known to do it all day long Alright, uh, having my guitar will play you on out of here <laughs> This is one of the collections from Fab Factory This thing is amazing, check this out It's got like a little cabinet in there See you next time. Think about this, Khaled, DJ Khaled, Pitbull, amazing stuff. Coming from the 305, we are happy to welcome to our desk one of the major players in that game, the major players in music, Mr. Lou Diaz. How are you, brother? Great, man. Good, Lou, man. Pleasure to be really? here, man. Really? Good to have it's you here. Honor. Like, nah. Hey. I got one of these in my hands. Yeah. Life is good. Take it home. You can <laughs> oh, eBay it for man. like 67 cents. So it's cool. We've been, we've been stalking Lou for a while. No, nah, man. It's an honor to be here, man. The, really, the influences, really. where did they start for you? Um, I mean, for me as a, uh, as a musician, I grew up, um, you know, high school was like around 85. So I had like a, a fusion of like hair bands, uh -huh. heavy metal, uh -huh. and I met hip hop. Oh, nice. It was such a trippy thing, you know? It's a similar kind of thing to him because he they started were. out with Belle Biv DeVoe <laughs> in L.A. Yeah. He's really before that, it was like Southern black All folks. Right. Right, right, yeah, right, and, right, and rock right. folks, too. Yeah. But but you guys... We're so similar. Yeah. That's, that's the theme of the show. Today. Well, I'm, I'm just finding it out. So it, you kind of took this hybrid approach and then morphed it into something that became a signature. So yeah, kind of correct. like, you know, I, I guess because I, at first my whole intent was never to be an engineer or producer. I just wanted to be a rock drummer. I was yeah. going to be a rock star in my mind. You know? Drums were your... Were yeah, your, were your so I was a drummer, I was in local bands, and uh, uh, and then my whole, well, I guess what I found out I had a knack for making things sound good was trying to get my drums to sound good. Uh, and in that process, I, I thought, wow, was, you know, I still wasn't thinking I'm going to do this. Right. I just was like, oh, I got my drums to sound the way I want them to sound. And, and then uh, somebody paid you for it. And, yeah, well. And you went. Lots of years <laughs> later. But, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I, th I, I thought, okay, this is, it makes sense to me. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, the being a musician first, ultimately, I think, really helped my career as an engineer from mm -hmm. an arrangement point of view. And, you know, it's a musicality to what we do that a lot of people don't know. Right. About. Oh, and, huge. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that, to me, was a leg up. It was an advantage. Mm -hmm. were, were you engineering when, when you and Hugo, uh, your brother, put together your first label? Yeah, actually, my brother is the reason why I became a mix engineer. Oh, really? Yeah, or, or an engineer. Yeah. Uh, what happened was I was at that point where I was between, like, the band thing and I was kind of, you know, playing around with the recording thing, but I wasn't really thinking about it seriously. I was hiring guys, mm -hmm. but I was learning from them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my brother got into that where he got the itch, and I want to be a producer. And I had a baby on the way, my first uh -huh. daughter. And I was like, here's all the equipment. Right. Have fun. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. He went and got a deal uh, for two acts, actually, K-Squad, another group called G.O.D., mm -hmm. with Atlantic. And it was actually through a guy named Peter Thomas, who's mm -hmm. a housewives mm -hmm. of Atlantic. Exactly. And Peter... Uh, Got the deal, and then my brother went, hey, let's, let, let me let's track this for me. So I went and recorded it for him, not thinking anything. And then I guess the roughs I was doing, the label got married to him, and then they hired an engineer that I recommended. Uh. And then they were like, man, it just didn't have that vibe. And then they said, well, who did the roughs? And my brother was like, my, my, little, I mean, my older brother. They're like, well, let's hire him. Yeah. And that was my first gig. But you know what? And I think you would co-sign this. And it's important for our audience to understand this. So many times your path to success is just like that. Absolutely. You follow one step, you don't yeah. know where it's going, you follow yeah. another yeah. one, and he, all of a sudden... He reminds me of you, because both of you guys, and I don't have this gift, can, can recognize opportunities where I don't see that they exist. Like, you're, you're a good businessman, you know, you know, and Herb is, is the best. Yeah, the business but Herb I like. always sees these opportunities. I'm like, how did he... I ask you that all the time. Like, how did you see that? <laughs> well, listen, desperation and rent will make you <laughs> no, see opportunities. <laughs> You'll be like, answer my, I'm going to make that an opportunity. That's my answer. Right? But, but you know what's funny is not, part of it is true, I guess, on the business side of, like, the the developing artist side, the label side thing, but on the uh, on the engineering creative side, I, I gotta admit, man, I stumbled into a lot of doors at the right time, uh -huh. and uh -huh. a lot of fairy dust. Somebody following me around because, you know. Just, well, what's interesting yeah. about your point, and also I think good for audience, is oftentimes the creative process is sort of stumbling to it. Yeah. The business process will have a structure, and you kind of know where to fit in that right, structure. Right, it's right, a right. Bit more, but the creative right, thing right, is, right. you look when when they called me from Ireland. And I recommended you just because we sat in a studio lobby forever. Mm -hmm. And just because you had worked with James Brown and Cameo, I said, boom. And then all of a sudden, you did Belle Bib DeVoe. Nobody could have organized that no, and no figured that out. No and way, what yeah. you did to yeah. us kill it. Yeah. Same as you. Yeah, no, but absolutely. Also, absolutely. Also, I was a product of a studio called Monarch Web 4 in Cheshire. Circle House, without that, you might oh, no, have, no. It might have taken you a whole new... Circle right. House was really where it took me from. Like, my brother's project kind of made me think, because, you know, what happened was they flew me to New York, and I'm at Soundtracks, and I'm like, okay, okay, what's uh, this? how do we turn this thing on? Let's right. go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Damn. Damn, what I did, yeah. Now, of course, I listened to those records, not at cringe, but, but it was like... It was my naiveness that kind of mm -hmm. got me through it. I mm -hmm. didn't understand. I didn't go to school for it, so mm -hmm. I didn't understand there was assistant... Engineer, right. recording engineer mixing, I was just you doing my thing. Your instinct. And then later, because of that, probably actually because of Peter as well, uh, we went. I, I was doing a recall, and I was in New York working, I think, at Quad. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get in Miami. He says to me, uh, "You're going to do the recall, but it's going to be at, a, at my friend's house." I was like, "Okay, we're working the biggest shoes in New York. All right, right. Well, we're going against a guy's house." I ride over there, and there's this double lot mansion, mm. and I, with gates, I walk in and. It was, at that time, just their private studio. Right. And I come walking in, I'm like, this place. Tell who they was. Oh, uh, in a circle. Bad the great, boys, the great, bad the boys. Great in a circle. Oh, oh yeah. that record. So they, that, bo that record built that, <laughs> that no studio. And Lunch Money Lewis is their Lunch Money, that's my little, that's my, 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 my boy right there. He's doing really well. Oh, he's, yeah, he's yeah. out here now. Oh, yeah, very yeah, cool. Yeah. He's got the record with Pitt and Flo. Yeah, we thing, yeah. So then, Miami, it has meant so much to your definition oh, of who you are. absolutely, absolutely. Tell us about what the city has meant to you, both oh. as a person and to a sound as a creative person. Huge. I mean, for me, it was it was like, you know, all of us, and I, when I say all of us, I'm talking about Khaled, Flo, Pitt, uh, uh, Ross, yeah, uh, everyone that was kind of made their mark now. We were the underdogs, right. you know? And, and I was, at the time, working in New York a lot, and I, I got a lot of that sort of like... Yeah. yeah, what you know, you guys make booty music. You right, know? right, right. <laughs> and my, well, the gig, one of the gigs with my brother, I was at Soundtracks mm -hmm. and uh, Heavy D, RIP, uh -huh. yeah, Heavy D. Uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, the Beat Nuts were in the other room. Yeah. And I, I come walking out and we got the Dolphin shirts on. Right. They looked at us like, you're crazy. You guys are bonkers. Yeah, you know? so, yeah, right. so to us, I think we all shared a lot of pride mm -hmm. when we finally got sort of the, 
the look, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we started, and really, Pit, I mean, Trick Daddy, Chino were there already. Mm -hmm. So Ted and his label was already doing it, but it was, Miami wasn't a movement yet. Right. And when Pit broke, it was kind of like, whoa, those kids Whole different. other level. And then came Khaled, and then came, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Ross mm -hmm. and Flo, and you mm -hmm. know, it just became yeah. a movement. So we all share that sort of pride, you know? Yeah. And you, you had hands in a lot of those records. You know, we were all. All of them, really. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like, I, indirectly, you know? Like, to be honest with you, even with Pit's project, me and my brother were very conscious to not sort of like, like, you know, strong on the project. Uh -huh. We opened it up. Jim Johnson, yeah. who's a huge ah, producer, started yeah, right, with us. Right. He did records. We opened it up. I wasn't mixing all the records. Actually, the first record, I did a lot of the engineering. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, I, I wanted the album to breathe mm -hmm. because I felt it was better for the future mm -hmm. of, of his career. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, we brought a lot of people in. And in that sense, we, it was a good community thing mm -hmm. for, our, for Miami, and, and everybody shared in the pride what, of the project. What's fascinating about what you're saying, and I think is also instructive for our audience, is... Along the way, there are all these little, let's call them collectives yeah. or groups, yeah. where you kind of get like-minded right, and right. you protect each other, you help each other get right, through right, what it right. needs. It helps shape your sound, Absolutely. you can try things. And, Absolutely. And, and that has, since the beginning of music, seen oh, that. Oh, yeah. And some of them become big. I, you know, everybody today brands, right. and they sometimes they get branding in front of the way of their skills. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah, branding becomes more yeah, important. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like anything else. Yeah, like, like a lot of kids, I, I'll sometimes like do talks, schools or whatever. Sure. And I tell them, I'm like, listen, the win is that if you're if you're paying your car note mm -hmm. and you're making your bills and you're doing this for a living, you won. You won. You know, I mean, the yeah. Grammys, the accolades, yeah. the platinum albums, all that's great. Mm -hmm. But you paying your bills, doing what you love for a living, mm -hmm. that's a big that's a big win. It's Let's go back privilege. to Pitbull for a minute. So so so, um, Wycliffe gave you some advice. Yes. And he said that um, I'm a paraphrase. He said. Uh, the way to make it is find an artist you really truly believe in right. and then go to the wall for it. Just yep. invest everything in it. That's and, pretty and much you did that said. early in your career, but you did yeah. it again with Pitbull, who you thought was yeah. a runner when you met him at the studio. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought he was an intern. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you were so impressed that you did just that. You bet the farm on that man. No, nah, I, I did. You know what's funny is. Um, and that's I, a great way to do it, because like yeah. we were talking about Ali, you know, mm -hmm. coming up with Kendrick, same sort of thing, thing, on and on mm -hmm. and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a way it, to do it in it today's is. world. And, you know, for me, I, I wish I could take credit for sort of being like, oh, this, I mean, listen, I definitely met, met Pitt and mm -hmm. said, this kid's a star. Mm -hmm. Uh, but beyond those that, those were the old boy days. Huh? Those were the early days. Oh yeah, that's so, when yeah, yeah. he had the cornrows. Yeah, yeah, and he the was whole thing. Fire. He, yeah, we yeah. didn't sign him because he was Mr. 305. We signed him because he was a, a rapper. Right. He was a, a he was a, a Latin great, rapper. Yeah. Right. And what happened was, um, uh, when, when I met him, I was actually hired to mix uh, Uncle Luke's yep. album, and he had a studio on the beach. Yeah. I went over there, and so he comes talking, come in, and starts talking to me, and I'm thinking he's my intern, you know. And, and, uh, <laughs> he's yapping to me. I'm like, who's this kid? Right, right. And uh, me and my brother had just had sort of that conversation with with uh, with Clef because what happened is we had done a remix for a girl named Ivy Queen, mm -hmm. and we did sort of we sample hot chocolates. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, uh, I believe in miracles. There you go. Mm -hmm. And it made American radio. Power picked it up in our in, in our area, and, mm -hmm. and then the president of Sony line was like, "Wow, you guys took our record and made it mm -hmm. a big deal for them." So then they flew Clef down for the video shoot. We met him, and that's when he kind of told us, like, you know, my brother actually said to him, "You know, give us some advice." And he said, "Well, you guys are here, but I would find some, you know, an artist you believe in and invest yourselves in that." Yeah. Yeah, so then when I met Pitt that day, mm -hmm. that's the bell that went off. I mm -hmm. met him and I thought, this is the guy that close stopped I got about. the. I, I think he's got the greatest story I've ever heard. <laughs> Correct me when I'm wrong. If I'm wrong by more, more than, than an hour, no, okay. not, no, definitely not that. Okay, cool. I just, if I'm off by more than an hour, stop me. So okay. he's at the studio. Pitbull comes in. <laughs> Nobody knows Pitbull. Uh, There's a song, I think it's called Kulo. Kulo. And um, so Pitt asks to be put on the song. So he puts Pitbull's vocal on this existing track. Pitt drives straight to a club, the DJ plays it, Little John hears it, Little John says, I want to be on that. They Ooh. drive back to the studio, put Little John on it. Little John goes to the radio station, he leaves the studio and on the way home he hears his song oh, on the radio. And it, so became, it became a, a national happens. anthem for well, that's Miami. The record, that's the record that really changed, wow. changed the world. Me and my brother Pitt's life. Is, wow. Who, who does it? How does, uh, you know what's funny, that man? That never happens. I wanna, yeah, I mean, it was hilarious. I've never heard Like that. you said it, I mean, there's some details that were different, but it was. It, what happened was we were at a, at a house where we were recording everything in Davie, sure. Florida. That's yeah, yeah. so where we did the Miami album. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he went to a club with John Love Latin Clubs. So mm -hmm. Pitt goes, oh, I'm going to go meet uh, uh, John, mm -hmm. but that song was meant to be a record. It was just like a, a mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend freestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he picked mm -hmm. up on everything. Mm -hmm. 
But then when I heard it, I was like, man, this is like this is like a record. Mm -hmm. And when he got to John, our, our boy Bobby Vieira, he was a DJ. Yep. And so Bobby plays it, and John's like, the hell's that? He's like, that's a, he's like, oh, it's a freestyle. He goes, no, that's a single. Right. So John and them go to Circle House, and I'm in the other studio. Huh. John lays his vocals down, and our DJ was there. I don't, know, I don't remember his name right now. Worked at the station. So on the way home, they go back was to the mix Power show. Power six. Yeah. yeah. And they play it. So when I hear it, I, Big I'm like, wait, like, yeah, I just, like, I'm yeah. in the Twilight Zone. Right, right. Yeah, and that, and it's, it See, was that's funny. that's recognizing opportunity <laughs> to a whole other well, level. Yeah, but I'll tell you what it, it is. It's an amazing story. Well, yeah, yeah, it is. But I'll tell you what it is that I see more and more of. There was more back then, and now I'm seeing it start to perk up again. Because you you can get behind somebody, but if you don't have taste or vision, oh, yeah. you can just get behind yeah. the wrong person I, yeah. and die. A lot of things have to align, too. Like, yeah. For us, it was like, you know, you got to remember, like, the underdog thing. While we were doing the pit, the, you know, you don't see it then. At least I can't tell right. you that I saw right. the right. movement. Right. But it was really cool now looking back and seeing that, damn, we, we lived through a, an era. And that, yeah, that, and you, that, you that. took the bet and you trust. It's just like Josh, yeah. uh, our boy Josh Goodwin uh -huh. gets, you know, he gets executive producer credit for helping to create the sound with Beaver that uh -huh. created the turnaround. Right. Uh -huh. And that used to be only like the province of producers or A and R executives, right, 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 right. but now it's just who who's got it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. who can influence it. So true, it's true, true. it's a credit to, to you, you guys you. you guys' vision. Yeah. So wh what what keeps you sort of stimulated about where we are today? Is it doing more music? Is it where music you know, is going? Is it education? Is it Yeah, bunch? it's a little bit of everything. I mean, okay. you know, I'm a little older now and I, I, I've never followed sort of like the structure, this natural like I was a recording engineer, then a mix mm -hmm. engineer, then a producer, or executive. My whole life has been a big mishmash. Like Pitt, I was in the middle of like just building my engineering career. Yeah, um, I had worked on a, a record that he wants to make fun of me about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> we let the dogs so, out. He won a Grammy for that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. You can't so, take it. So anyway, and then paid some and, bills. And you know the studio manager at, at, at Circle House. You know the whole band. They they they, they were they so invested in in, in, in me. Yeah. Ray C was the other engineer that was right, there at yeah. the time too. Right. We kind of both came up uh, through Circle House. And then I one day come home, you know, at home, but come back to the street. I'm like, hey, listen, don't book me as much. I need to slow down because I'm going to invest in. They looked like me. I had three heads. Wow. They were like, are you crazy? We spent all this time grooming you. You're that guy now. And, right. But I just kind of always moved in a really unconventional way. And mm -hmm. I just followed my gut. Mm -hmm. And thank God, knock on, that mm -hmm. it worked. You know? Yeah. Because yeah, I could be sitting right. here. I'd actually be sitting over there and, I, you know, like not doing no, anything. You're, because you're right here. my life really changed at that moment. Well, at least from a production sure, right. perspective. You right, know? right. Uh, but it was, all, a lot of it had to do with, you know, in a circle, the studio giving me a platform and a place mm -hmm. to be at, and then me just being very naive and just jumping at a chance like that. Isn't the key to always be ready? You don't know when the opportunity's gonna come, yeah. but oh, you no, no. just gotta be ready, yeah. right? And the thing is, is like, to me, a, a lot of it is sort of being a little bit naive, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you know too much, I agree. you tend to kind of That's tighten deep. up. You know, I agree. I see some of these kids that get great educations, but then when they get in the room with like a big artist, mm -hmm. I notice they're not. You know, when you're too nervous, you, you tend to kind of not do your, you know, yeah. your best. We 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 preach that all yeah. the time. Yeah. We preach it to the camera. And, and my heart goes up to them. You know, well, you know, yeah. the 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 guys today have so much available to them. Right. Technology and phones and so on and so forth. In my conversation right. with the <clears throat> with the OU guys right. and and gals, you know, we talked about the context of. Use your tools, but also then put your tools down. Right, right, right. And put your head up. Yeah. And, and, and have conversation and know yeah, people exactly. skills. And exactly. stuff. If you want to be in the creative yeah. space. Yeah. If you don't, that's a different thing. Uh, no, also, Lou, um, another thing that, that to follow up on Herb's question, um, um, people underestimate the power of tracking. When you're tracking oh, for, yeah. for, for artists, you, you gain their trust, you gain their confidence. Oh, absolutely. You do a couple of suggestions, they, they trust your taste. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you're doing a rough mix. Next thing you know, you're mixing yeah, on the record. Records, Explain yeah. how important that was in I your mean, life. That, that to me was what even gave me the idea of being an engineer. You know, I, I didn't see myself as an engineer. I was helping my brother out. Right. And so as we were recording vocals, I'm like, ah, let me, I was on a trident board, and I'm just like two two-inch tape. Mm -hmm. I mean, a little tech on the hat, you know, just being, making it sound decent. And that's really what kind of gave me my first opportunity. And, and, and you know, like I said, I was naive, but I did realize at that moment, because I had a label before, right? And it was just <sighs> madness, right? Yeah, too young for that. Yep. That's all right. right. Just Beyonce calling. Yeah, I think I'm gonna throw this thing out there. Pit, we'll call yeah. you right back. It's Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> he rolls that way. He's, <laughs> hey man, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, so. Um, Damn, I even lost my train of thought. Okay. We were talking about tracking, the how tracking. important so, it is. 
as I was tracking, mm -hmm. you know, what happened is that gave my first break. So what I do is I tell a lot of kids that are starting, I'm like, don't be afraid. I mean, it's in the box now, hold on. Right. But throw in a couple of plugins, make it sound decent. Yeah, because yeah. eventually you're gonna get somebody who's gonna say, man, they get married to that, listen to that record over and over again. And some artists are very particular about what they listen to. Yep. And then you might hire a big time guy and then it's just kind of the vibe is different. And, and you've got the artist there to get his Absolutely. taste into what you do. Absolutely. It comes to me a total stranger out and- And you, yeah. And, you, spend, you know, you yeah. spend 18 hours a day with people for weeks, you right. become friends. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that's I such a misunderstood. Oh, yeah. And, and, and. It's such an important part. Well, and, and also I think that the, the notion of that trust yeah. Um, because ultimately, you know, back when I was a manager and I brought stuff to Dave, right. I got out of Dave's way. And, you right. know, he could do what he needed to do because I trusted him. People come to you, it's about trust. And that yeah. comes from understanding no. the artist and them going, yeah. he's going to help make my thing better. Or even if it, we don't use it, it's going to be worth it to check oh, out. Yeah, for sure. He may have some, I know when I do creative stuff for this, mm -hmm. I always want other people's ideas. They may yeah. see it differently yeah, than yeah. I would oh, see no, it. I love that. And, I, and that's yeah. part, that's yeah, growth. Yeah, yeah. Right? Right? And you know what it is, though? It's like, I, I think, especially today, because yeah. you get so inundated with so much technology, so much yeah. information. Yeah. I, I feel like, I'm not saying that people shouldn't be, of course, educate yourself and work at your craft, but there's something to be said about sort of like just letting the noise be the noise. Completely. And let your gut kind of tell you where to move. And, Completely. You know what I mean? No, I know it sounds kind of no, corny, it but. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Let me tell you what it does. Um, I, I've said this before. People who sit to Dave and I's left, the best of the best, like yourself, Thank you. always talk about the fact that that mistake or that character thing or mm. trying that becomes the signature oh, in a record yeah. that you didn't see coming. It wasn't yeah. about technology. Yeah, yeah. It's about, I remember Quincy Jones said once, I don't, I don't keep a studio in my house because when I go to the studio, it's, it's church and sometimes God comes in. Wow, nah, no. And, and, when, and when, yeah, when God comes in, you yeah. just kind of go, okay, Jesus, we're rolling. No, I mean, I've had those moments where right? I'm like, wow. Like, I mean, that record, you want to make fun of me? Yeah. <laughs> I walked Oof. into that. I, I walked in. I wasn't supposed to be the engineer on that. I really? love that record, by the way. Yeah. I brought my daughter up. Every time she misbehaved, I sang that record to her at the Ooh. top of my lungs. I don't know how I feel about that. It That's was it. horrible. <laughs> She's scarred for life. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, oh, man, you're going to record him. Let's get that. We'll put it on the internet. Um, uh, an interviewer one time asked you, um, what was your aha moment? And your answer, I thought, was brilliant. And you said, when I discovered less is more. Yeah. Can you expand on that? That, if from the engineer mixing point of view, the recording and all that, is probably what made me realize, okay, like, I, I think to me was where I went from, like, sort of a novice to a pro. Mm -hmm. And I, I was... I was in, I think, room B at Circle House, and I'm struggling. I'm wrestling with the alligator. How many, how many big records had, had you already had? Out I mean, I, I had bit, like sort of big label work. I hadn't <laughs> done anything big yet. Uh -huh. it, was, it was, it was like a couple of records for Trick. Uh -huh. uh, Can't mm -hmm. fuck with the South. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, yeah, stop you real quick. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Ray C. Uh, oh, that's right. Trick Daddy. Uh, <laughs> I'm a thug. Great record. 2003. Uh, yeah. That was in my reference folder. Still is. I swear to you, uh, it's still. No, is. Right Whenever I'm right. sad, I her, love when you go hip hop. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not hip hop. Trust He's so me. hardcore, I'm just, man. I, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm just. I'm just saying. Right? But, but, when, it was like, but whenever I get sad, I play that loud as hell. I can't That's work so the rest funny. of the day, but it, but it but it just makes me happy when the kids come in. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the fried Betty chicken Wright. line. Just, I love kids. that record. Ray C. Shout out to you, yeah, buddy. Yeah. You killed yeah, that my record. Boy. That's my my comedy. Anyway, right didn't there. mean to stop yeah, yeah. it. No, no, not at all. Um, but yeah, like I, so, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't even remember the client I was working on, but I was having one of those. Just twisting knobs, pop and compression, trying, yeah. <laughs> trying to get that kick. Yeah. To give me an, an, an trying to do all the stuff you read about to do on exactly. the internet. <laughs> exactly. 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 And, and I'm not making fun of the internet. No, We're on the internet. See, back then, there wasn't much of it's the internet. A, it's yeah, seductive. Right, right. Yeah. You would, when I was you hear there, somebody you like, and I'm popping and stuff. My sister, driving my sister crazy. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to do everything before I have to replace the kick. Yeah. All right? And back then, it was difficult because we we're on tape and blah. Right. So I'm like, all right. And then at one point, I pulled the insert point out, took all the wires out of frustration, put the fader up, and I thought, sounds pretty good. <laughs> this is better. Yeah, I was like, huh, let me put a little 10K on it, you know? Yeah. Put a little sub, and I'm thinking, that sounds Damn. so much better. Right. And it just went off in my head. I was like, whoa, I, I'm, way, I'm overthinking this. Like, uh -huh. is, for both of you, let me <laughs> ask you both this, because I, I often, whatever work I've done in observing creative types and being uh -huh. a creative person, 
I think genius, the genius is in simplicity. It is. It's so much harder I to agree. make That's it seem simple. That's a lesson that we have to learn every hour, yeah. every day. Same as yeah. me. I still battle with that. But every yeah, artist. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. no, it's not how complex you can be. Yeah. It's how do you make it simple so the messaging gets through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where the work it's is. It's trippy. Yeah. I mean, and that, and that really kind of got me on, on a different trajectory. I mm -hmm. started uh, approaching things differently, and you know, there was just sounding good. Mm -hmm. it, it was okay to leave things alone, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, I got a, I got a to catch a predator moment <laughs> uh -oh. question for you. So you're, you're, you're Ooh, preaching, wow. you're preaching Ooh, simple list. I'm, I'm not preaching. sure where we're going. No, I, I, yeah, I, I got it. I got by you. What is he drinking? I, 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 okay. I got okay. hooked on this Okay, one. cool. Okay, so you're preaching simplicity, but yet one of the things you like to do is take a sound to the limit. Yeah. Which is excess. Right, right. Over the top. Yes, yes. Internet y, and yeah. then dial it back. Right. So justify the two. The well, two. Because okay, I understand so, really how well, you, it was what, a, what you a mean. time frame, you know, yeah. at, at the time that that happened. Because I love that concept. Yeah. And then, you know, after that, I think it was also the non educated part of me. Sure. I was like twisting knobs till they sounded good. Figuring it out. Uh, but then, it really, honestly, it counted. Khaled's projects started getting me to be very aggressive. Uh, you know, Khaled was always like, we got to be louder, we got to be bigger, you know. Uh, uh -huh. uh, and, you know, as an audio <laughs> guy, you're trying to control them. It's kind of playing the... No way, not yeah, going to happen. Trying to do the, the two thing, you know, do a good mix and keep them happy. Right, right, right. Uh, that's, my, that's my brother. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's but, our but career. But his influence in my life and, and in, in the, the, you know, the albums, constantly wanting to be just bigger, Right, I started becoming the kind of guy that I thought, you know what, it's okay to take a sound or, right. or a mix to the very edge. And then there's that little balance that go back and forth. You know, like with a kick, I'll go and squash it and go crazy. Right. And as I go back, I start kind of pulling things away and adding a little more makeup and going back. Right. It's just a constant balance, but I'm always teetering on over the cliff. L last night when I was in the studio <laughs> with Ali, um, and, you know, he's aggressively doing stuff and he's going over things, he's adding stuff. And it, it's like watching a surgeon and then he'll listen to different levels. Right. And then when you, you don't know it, he'll go to ear bleed. And, 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 and he just, it was like a nuclear explosion. Now, I like it a lot. I, love it. I just sat up straight like my eyebrows were back. I love it. And he was just feeling it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was, you could see it informing him. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, it was just, I call it the Zoom. Ah, yeah, like I feel like I'm seeing. That's amazing. Yeah, because I, I, I got this thing. I don't know if you guys ever heard of a uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, and it's still where I'm forgetting. But anyway, there's this thing where you associate colors oh, to numbers. Uh, synesthesia. Synesthesia. Yeah. I have that. Ooh, you're so my so number, and I don't know what. No, it's, it's, it's not actually. It's actually Bruce, kind of a, Bruce Wedding kind of pioneered it. Really? Way, I had no idea. I had that. I, I always thought numbers from 1 to 12 mm -hmm. were a color. Mm -hmm. I thought I was taught that when I was a little kid. Mm. Until about five years ago, somebody did dinner and goes, oh, you got synesthesia. I'm like, I'll be done. What the hell are you talking about? Wow. Yeah, so now I know about it or whatever. And there's there's a, definitely a downside to it, mm -hmm. but it has, uh, in my crazy mind, it, 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 it helped makes me. Sense when to you. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. for me, like, volume is almost like visual. So when I, people say, man, you, because I'm a little bit of a maniac. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I, no, I love it. I, 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 I massage those 18s. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah are you, are you, are you a gentle like guy? No. no. I like gentle X, but right. um, they're not for me. Right. Right now. I, I, I'm not a big fan of all of them, but the eight, the double 18s to me. Uh, Do your thing. They zoom the mix out the, for the me. The 1036As? So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. And I go, and I go, I go to 11. You can hurt you yourself know. with those no, speakers. You, you, you those are great speakers. I, I've slowed down, but what it is is for me, it's especially in the cow of the urban stuff. Sure, it, you know where that's going to be appreciated is going to be in a club. So and I need to create. You that. have to go there, in I my view, because the, yeah. their competition is going there. Right, and you need that kind of referencing to exactly. know that it's at least competitive. Exactly. Right? Yeah, 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 right. Of course, Chongo, you got a couple questions. We do. All this right. First one's from Jonathan Hux. How do you deal with recalls with a fast turnaround time? Ooh. Well, the box is awesome. There you go. You know, it's, it was my, like, I was very um, hesitant about letting go of the console. Mm -hmm. I love my G, I love the 9, I mm -hmm. love the K. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I, I did it, I want to say, probably six years ago. I just decided, you know what, I'm going to just do one record on the box. I think it was um, uh, Ace's Ball Like a Bitch. Ah. And I just did it as I figured, let me just do it. I can always quickly turn around and do another mix if I have to do it. You know, mm -hmm. it was one of those situations. And then I heard it in the club and I thought, wow, this, this really, really works. translates, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and it took me a minute to sort of, the approach is completely different. Sure. Uh, but what it did for me is, yeah, deadlines, I mean, with a Khaled, right. to, I'm constantly pulling, going from one record to the other For record. sure. You know, and, and his stuff is very like, uh, 
we're waiting on Kendrick's vocals. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm mixing a record that's got a gap on the third verse. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of going, which is fun. I, I like the challenge, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of, like, scheduling issues mm -hmm. and last minute, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, guys are coming into to, Label to people, project. management people, a &R people. It's right, like, yeah, so from, a, from, a, from a, a deadline point of view, I love it. I love that I can double click and be in another record. Doesn't it keep your energy, like I, you know, there are times in Managing Dave mm -hmm. where I've got him too overloaded and because he's such a perfectionist, it can bog it down while he tries to get everything perfect. Right. But there's almost a balance where he's just churning and, it, and the rhythm right. is rolling. And, and my job is to try to find that churn, right? Like you're in a churn yeah. right now that's pretty I, good. I, 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 I'm less happy when, I'm the least happiest when I don't know I have something. Right. I'm the most happiest when I'm behind. Right. Getting caught up is the scariest thing on earth. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, it is and, scary. And, and it's I need a scary that, thing. I need that creativity. And I think all creative people need deadlines. Yeah, uh, a little pressure me, is always good. Michelangelo would still be painting the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> Absolutely. The Pope did say, look, you got to oh, finish it this yeah. century. <laughs> <laughs> the Pope's that's finished. A great, that's a great uh, John, give us another one. This next one's from James Hammond. Are the Khaled vocals in yet? Are the Khaled vocals in? Well, for the major key, they're all in. They're in the can. Well, the major key is coming out. The, the, actual, the actual question is... She got plenty to say, though. I had to do it. You had to go there. Mr. Hungarian. That's hilarious. I love it. What, what plugins did you use on Khaled's vocal chain? Uh, hold up, hold up. Khaled's vocal chain? Mm -hmm. No, nah, you know, it's funny you say that. <laughs> Kaz's vocal chain is actually very old because we've gotten to the point now, although he, 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 he records, you know, obviously everything new, but we have a lot of tags that are already from back in the day that we pop in. Mm -hmm. with the delay. He's very particular about the delay, the way it sounds. Uh, but yeah, with him, it's you know what's funny? He's, he's got an easy vocal. Mm. Yeah, a little uh, R Vox, I kind of smash a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, just because, you know, for him, it's always about energy. Right. So uh, R Vox, you know, the standard DS or all that stuff. Right. Um, but I, I do, you know, C6 on him. Um, it's kind of my go-to thing with him, too. But we, we a lot of times we cheat. Grab the file, drop it in. There you go. DJ Khaled, we the best. We Boom. got them all, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. But then Khaled will go in and say, okay, hold on, give me the third verse. I want to do that. For example, with the Nas record. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to do the iconic thing and all that. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of after seven albums now. It's, you know, it's kind of like... Please tell, please tell him this. I, tell, I told his label chief... This is label chief is L.A. Reid. L.A. Reid, yeah, of course. Um, so we came up together. We started at the same place together. Right, right, so right. I knew him when he had gold teeth and a bad jerry curl. Um, <laughs> oh, trust me, it was a horrible jerry curl. It, 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 was, it was shiny Stop. and dry. And, you know, you can't, jerry curl can't be dry. Right, so it was right, just, right. But they were always clean. They'd go buy $10 patent leather shoes and $14 oh, yeah. suits. He oh, made yeah. the face. So that was always yeah. part of his thing. So we were at... Um, where they hold Epic Fest, where he performed, uh -huh. is where we hold the Pensado Awards, right. the Sony Movie Lot. So we had it back-to-back -back nights. Wow. And I pulled L.A. to the side and I said, the marketing campaign around him is fabulous. And please tell him that he goes way beyond being a musical talent. Oh, yeah. He is great on camera. He's great in commercial. He's commercials. amazing. He's really cool. I mean, me and he my... He owns Snapchat for oh, a while. Oh, yeah, <laughs> me and Me and me and my... My wife does what you do for... Oh, for, cool. For, she's, like the man, she's the boss. Yeah, yeah. All right? So that's to my For all of us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, so she and I had this conversation before, and I told her years ago, I go, Khaled is a reality show waiting to happen, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And when Snapchat came in, it was just that perfect boom. storm. Just boom. boom, he got it, and people tuned in, and I, I'm, yeah. I'm happy that finally people see what I've been dealing with right. for you know, 15 right. years of my life. <laughs> like, he's my brother, he's the best, he's so Every funny, day. he always has his laugh, yeah. you know? Every day I come to the studio and Leandro, you gotta watch this, you yeah. gotta watch this. I'm like, oh please, no more Khaled. He's, he's, uh, I don't know, Khaled is like probably the most uninhibited guy that I know. Well, if he's generous of spirit and wants to help out a little web show, he hey, can come by I, anytime. I'm gonna hit him up, I'm gonna, we'll, he's actually we'll, was out here, now he's in Miami, I'm here. That's but, right, we can hook it up. Yeah. Or, or, or we should talk about us coming to Miami. Because the please Grammy chapters that. have talked to us a couple oh, of times. Man, should we talk about that? that? We'll talk, talk about, about that. We'll that not, for not, sure. not on air, but we'll, we'll yeah, do that. We'll come down and do we'll something get, big. Hey, we'll get everybody done. Oh, that'd, that'd be <laughs> great. <laughs> that'd be great. Make it a little you got, uh, Is it the Funnel 305 right here? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be the alien. So, uh, how's your batter's box? How's your arm there, homie? Oh, it's bilingual. Oh, boy, here it comes. Playoffs. Baseball playoffs. So, you got to throw heaters. You know, Cubans. They're pretty good with baseball, yeah, they're, so they're, I'm not expecting incredible. much from myself. Uh, I'm going to try. Well, I've try. got a lot of loyal fans out there I have to try. support. All right, cool. Are you ready? Yeah, I must Here, go. Here's batter's oh, box. Here Let's go. roll okay. it. Kula o culito? Kula. No! <laughs> yeah, i got to be safe. got to keep it open. <laughs> 
I'm Kulu, sitting here going. Kulu is, Kulu is big ass. Uh-huh. Kulito is a little tiny ass. He likes, <laughs> and he, and he I'm he from likes Miami. The, so. He likes the larger yeah. ass. So we just stand there. Well, but you're missing a key point. Is this on a male or a female? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> right. hey, uh, let's go to, let's that, go to so. number two. Let's uh, go to the next uh, pitch. In, in, <laughs> In Miami, it's always female. I, I would yeah. assume. Most beautiful yeah. women on earth, so you don't have to state that. 808s. 808s. Uh, isotope, uh, isotope multiband compression, but five. We like isotope. I'm still on five. Off now. We like really. isotope. Guitars. Guitars, reamp. I reamp guitars a lot. Uh-huh. Stereo bus. Stereo bus, isotope five with the soft limit. Now listen, the reason why still I'm on five? five, you know why? Uh-huh. Because it got rid of the soft limit on six. I love seven, don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but there's something about that soft limit. It's probably because it's not fully limiting. Have we tried Neutron yet? <laughs> uh, their newest thing, yes, Neutron? Yes, yes, Is it good? Look at her. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, look at this guy. Look at her. My man. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm learning after six yeah, years, 288 yeah, yeah, yeah. episodes. I don't even I'm know. I'm just stuck on that right now. <laughs> you know, that's my thing right now. Yeah, yeah. Reverb. Oh, man, Manny's. Mm. Manny's verb, man. I got to give it, it to him. It is good. Yeah, yeah. Great. All his plugins are great. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I love Remixes. Remixes. They're special. Uh, I mean, I love remixes. Me remixes gave me so many opportunities in life. Me too. Yeah, so to me, remixes were probably my favorite thing to do. I'll be doing. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Wow. I don't do them a lot, but I, I love doing them. Yeah. DSing. DSing? Ah, uh, just the waves. Uh, I love the 902 rack, but now, you know, the DBX 902 is my used to be my Drums. Uh, drums is a, a collage, you know, m- smorgasbord of everything. Like live drums, I like to I like to do a little, like, drummer compressor sometimes. You know, mm-hmm. it depends on the drum style, but the hip hop stuff is a lot of different things. A lot of multiband, hmm. a lot of multiband. Café Cubano. Café Cubano? Si. Sí. Cortadito. Cortadito? Oh. Yeah, cortadito. <laughs> oh. Okay, if your oh. studio caught fire, what one piece of gear would you rescue? And you can't say your dog, your wife, your laptop, your okay. hard drive. Well, her dogs. <laughs> yeah. uh, no laptop, no hard drive? No. Well, in my, my room, I don't really have any gear anymore. I mean, I work, I work at if I wasn't C in a car on fire, mm-hmm. I'd probably try to get those Jennies out of the wall, but <laughs> kill myself. <laughs> Come on, damn it! <laughs> uh, I think, I think I'm okay. I'm principal. I would grab the GML. Gotcha. It, it just shouldn't burn that down. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. I think I'm principal. I would catch a little an 8200. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. It's just I, I don't know. I, I I've always loved that. Yeah. That, same that here. Hair I don't know if I would use it, but uh, I would save it. I, I, I didn't let the fact that I knew I would lose affect me. I worked hard on it. I tried. <laughs> well, it's it's making me actually mop the desk. <laughs> because <laughs> the, there is a reason that Major League Baseball goes to Cuba and recruits I knew it. I knew it. Cuban I, I, ball players. I, I, I was trying to do like Did you see the ease in which he played? I tried to go psychological on he it. He could have actually <laughs> been eating uh, some food and, and doing something else. Well, you guys just, make it so comfortable, man. Oh, it's so comfortable oh, to be thanks, here. Man. It is. By the way, I have to say this. Yeah. And I, I want to say while we're on that I love what you guys are doing. Oh, not o- not only because uh, you know it's great for the audio community, but for the future of the kids that are coming up. It's a platform that. Thanks, man. Nah, it really it, it's really cool. Thank like, you, man. Honestly, because like we're kind of the most overlooked, I think, in the industry. Or no. we're now to you guys. Not anymore, baby. Yeah, this platform is incredible. But I know how much you two suffer doing yeah. this. So yeah, my. Ah! That's all. Awesome, nah, well, talk to both of you guys. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and no, and it. it's a shared suffering. I know more than anybody <laughs> what he what he suffers for yeah. for this. But what makes it worth it, though, man? The audio well, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, um, uh, it was it was funny when I went into Ali last night just uh-huh. to tell you the story. So the artist was from Ireland, and <clears throat> and he's from the UK. And John Stem and Jeff Stem, so whatever the case. But his new project is going to be called Mr. Jukes. And so this is the funny part. Usually now, because of our profile, you know, in studios or right. audio, you know, we're like, yeah, um, you guys are So well, and I'm, you know, I'm just going in to see my boy Ali. So I'm standing at the side, and the guy goes, he says, uh, "Are you an audio engineer?" And I was like, "Well, well no, not really." Um, and and I said, "You know, I used to be a manager, this, that, and the other." And I'm just waiting, and because you know, he apparently doesn't know the show. And um, I said, "Now, you know, I'm part of this this online show called." I'm trying to play it low, mm-hmm. but the Pensado's place. He went. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> it's you. <laughs> and, he like, and he spent like three minutes going. I, I uh, watched the show. So <laughs> my point being, <laughs> awesome, my point man. being that it's such a gift. But that's a, such yeah. a reflection of what you guys are doing, man. Well, you know what we found is that in giving to them, right, 
the way they give back and then in giving to you guys the way you guys give back, which right. is why I'm always, it's probably redundant now, always asking guys like yourself, I, I, I'm the one who's outside of audio. Right. And as I came in, I will tell you that, I've, you know, we recently had this award. I looked at my career. I had a pretty broad career. Yeah. And nobody is smarter. Nobody has more depth of people. The talent level is incredible. In all the everything I've done, in the audio space. I appreciate you guys that. are you. just yeah. you're complex. You're developed as human beings. You're just balanced. You have families, and yeah. and I tell people all the time, if you don't do what you guys do, there aren't any hits. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's just a fact. With, with the end of the line, you know, mastering guys, you got to give it to them. You yeah. Know, but that, yeah, to me, I feel like that's oh, you guys, you're the took, you're the intersection of art and commerce, and I know that as a manager. I appreciate that. And and, and yeah. by the way. Audio, is, as they've heard, audio's yeah. everywhere. Right. Well, just, like, just like yeah, she's yeah. calling you. That's why she's calling her. Beyonce, I told you not to call me. So just, uh, we now don't even turn them off. So I, without going through all the kudos, one, thank you for everything oh, you said. Um, we are so thrilled to have you there. Thank you, man. The, the Miami, the promise, the new stuff looks good. New talent coming up. You know, yeah. Now I'm starting to see the bubble okay. kind of start building again. We okay. A couple of guys, Zoe Dollar signed up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a few guys doing things, but you know, I always think it's always cool to see that wave come again. You yes. know, that's why uh, yeah. I'm happy I'm still down there. You'll do more stuff with us, of course. Whatever you guys need from me, I'm here. By the way, do you ever talk to Pitt? Of course. Tell Pitt he um, his live front of house guy won our last Chester Star Wars I with saw Bartolome that. Medeiros. I saw that. And Pitt gave the coolest shout out in San oh, cool. Antonio on yeah, stage, so cool. awesome. and it just blew our audience now, away. Pitt's, Pitt's, you know, the most grounded telling superstar have, I know. I respect yeah, him yeah, as yeah. a businessman. Tell him he was great on Bill Maher. Yeah, yeah, too. yeah, yeah. It's fabulous, too. fabulous. Me and my wife watch it together. Oh, it was good. <laughs> Dave, take us home. Okay, guys, um, I'm sitting here listening to Lou, and one of the things that just keeps coming back and, and filtering through my head over and over again is is how when you're trying to help someone else out, you're either by tracking or working at their studio, a lot of doors open for you in return. So always try to put yourself first in a position to, um, to help someone, and a lot of good things will happen. You gotta be ready, though. We'll see you next week. Gear Expo! Yeah.